Anyone who enjoys watching diggers and bulldozers would guess that the best way to harness the hugely powerful undulations of a wave energy device such as the duck to the shaft of its electrical generator is by oil hydraulics. In fact, the hydraulic transmission for the duck called for a whole new generation of machines. When he arrived in our group, Robert Clerk had already spent much of his working life developing a remarkable axial piston swashplate machine. In the mid-1980s, Matthew Ree and Karen Gibson worked with him to build and test a 500 kilowatt prototype. Robert was uncompromising in his pursuit of high efficiency at full and part load, and we knew that such an approach was essential if wave-generated electricity was ever to be economically produced. The machine ran inside a dry case, and most of the bearings, including those of the swash plate, were hydrostatic. The outsides of the cylinder sleeves were pressurised to reduce piston leakage and the tri-link connection eliminated slipper pads. The design incorporated hydraulic computing elements to optimise performance. Robert Clerk's brilliant synthesis of new ideas pushed the limits of conventional hydraulics. To obtain the ultimate efficiency with a natural interface to electronic and computer control, Stephen Salter had already begun working with Robert, and now with Wynne Rampen, to develop a new technology, digital hydraulics. By using computer-triggered valves, individual cylinders of their new radial piston machine would be pressurised into circuit only when a work stroke was required. Individual units could be stacked on a common shaft to form the wedding cake machine, an energy processing system able to service many independent hydraulic circuits. This solid works view shows the copper wire of the section solenoid coils and the black valve poppets. Into each of the large diameter internal bores will be fitted a cylinder, like the one shown hatched in the centre of this VASCAD drawing, the big end of its piston floated by hydrostatic pads over the rotor eccentric. The digital concept scaled easily to different sizes. The first machine was for a portable hydraulic power supply. The pump sits in the oil tank under the electric motor. Pressure and flow can be set by control knobs or by external command signals. This was the first machine built by Artemis Intelligent Power, set up by Wynne Rampen to commercialise digital hydraulics. Artemis supplied prototypes of the pump to Sauer Danfoss, world leaders in mobile hydraulics, and they continue to be involved with the work. Digital hydraulics required the evolution of a new species of poppet valve, which would rapidly change state following a current pulse in a solenoid. We made these low-pressure poppets from a carbon-filled thermoplastic called PEAK, polyether, ether ketone. We had already tested these little sample poppets to see if peak was up to the job. The rotor of the test rig subjected each of them to one billion pressure cycles and confirmed that peak poppets would be dimensionally stable, fast and quiet in operation. When the test rig was running, our colleague Essan was refining the design of annular poppet valves using computational fluid dynamics. By providing an inner and an outer flow passage, annular poppets will greatly increase valve flow capacities. This will be particularly important for larger machines. Meanwhile, spherical poppets are still useful in small machines. This recent SolidWorks model is for a new low-pressure poppet. The computer also generated the codes that Neil Caldwell fed into the numerically controlled mill. Neil is working with Artemis, and for his PhD, he's building a wheel motor. Up until now, the digital hydraulic machine has operated as a pump. It's vital to extend its capability so that the same machine can also function as a motor. The first wheel motors will be fitted to a small vehicle, and the crucial test will be to generate zero speed torque for startup. Neil also spent some time redesigning the solenoid magnetic circuits using the ANSYS finite element package. The solenoids are energised by brief pulses of current, precise times when the oil forces across the poppets are near zero. Magnetic forces are generally much smaller than the working pressures of oil hydraulics, so to have authority over residual fluid pressures, the solenoids must be very well designed indeed. On the prototype wheel motor, the valves and the solenoids are in place. The motor is enclosed in a cylindrical casing to completely immerse it in oil. There are a lot of variables to be optimised on its control card, 
the valve control algorithm and timings are particularly critical for motoring. Neil's using one of the original digital hydraulic power packs to drive the new motor. It's very handy for this kind of setup. Because there aren't any throttling valves, the oil and the machine stay cool. The gentle chatter of poppet firing also provides a kind of intuitive diagnostic tool. To our ears, the sound is like a kind of pleasing hydraulic dialogue between machines. The drive to develop intelligent hydraulics came from wave power research, and we now know that it will have a much wider impact.